Hey everyone, this is Darkin, and I'm going to be doing a little video review of the Wacom Companion. And I have my camera set up here because unfortunately I don't have a very good screen recording program on the Companion because it's a PC. The um, screen flow that I use is only for Mac. So unfortunately I can't use it on here. And um, I tried using some other programs and they look, they were kind of laggy. So it kind of gave the impression that the tablet was being laggy, but it was actually the screen recording program that was causing the lag. But I have the, the companion here and I'm gonna go to this camera here to talk about the review. All right, so this is the Wacom Companion and I already wrote a written review about it. So if you've seen that, or read that then you kind of already know pretty much what I'm going to talk about but I thought it'd be nice just to see it in action a little bit and I'm running Photoshop CC on here so first impression is that this tablet is amazing it is definitely the best tablet PC I've used and you know I, I really can't say enough good things about it even though you know there were a couple little problems I had at the beginning with the lag but that's been completely resolved and the other things were really minor like the placement of the power button because the power button is um, you know right here at the bottom which is kind of weird and on the side so a lot of times if I'm working at, on the table and I want to kind of move it like this because you know that's kind of where you typically would grab it to move it um, a lot of times your hand will hit the power button and it'll put it to sleep like that so you know, I'm not really sure why they put it on the bottom there. If they had put it up here, that would have been fine, or even on the top. Um, you know, but other than that, there really aren't very many problems with this thing. I guess I'll just go over a couple little things in my written review before I show actual painting in Photoshop. Um, everyone wants to know about battery life. I haven't used all 100% yet because I've never been without an outlet for that long and I just haven't really gotten around to you know unplugging it and testing all 100% of the battery but I tested it out in high powered mode or high performance mode and I used 85% of the battery which you know is still pretty good so in high performance running Photoshop I got three and a half hours out of 85% so you know you're gonna get at least three and a half hours by using high performance and then in balanced mode I had worked for two hours and 20 minutes and only used 30 percent of my battery so if that keeps going then you know you could get seven hours in Photoshop in balanced mode but again I haven't really tested all 100 percent of the battery so who knows if it actually you know is consistent um, using the entire battery but if I get more information, I'll be sure to post that. Let's see, I'm trying to think of some other things that people always ask. Um, as far as um, scratches, you know, I've clocked probably at least 80 hours on this thing already, and there aren't any scratches whatsoever. I mean, you know, in the long run, 80 hours is nothing compared to, you know, working on this for several months or a year. So, you know, I'll see how it holds up um, several months from now. But so far, you know, there's absolutely no scratches or anything. Uh, another thing is heat. People always want to know about heat because Cintiq's had that problem. This does not get hot at all. Um, I've used it for eight hours straight, and, you know, it, it really doesn't get hot. So that doesn't seem to be a problem. People are also wondering about fan noise. Um, I guess it really depends on what you consider loud. I don't really think it's that loud because the Fujitsu is a lot louder than this one, but this one is louder than the Asus, so it's kind of in the middle between those two computers. But it's really hard to kind of distinguish the fan noise from the ambient background noise in these videos, so I don't really think that um, you know trying to record the fan noise is really a viable option with these um, videos especially because you know in order to hear the fan noise you kinda have to put the 
microphone really close to it to try and pick it up and then that's not really accurate because you know it's not going to be that loud when you're sitting here working on it because your ear is not going to be like right here where the fan is but yeah I mean I don't really have a problem with the fan noise now, a lot of people say they don't like the stand but I actually like the stand a lot I have no problems with it some people are saying that it's hard to use or it's awkward or you know whatever but I don't know, I think it's pretty good. There are three different settings that you can use for different angles. I usually just keep it on the second one because that one feels the best for me when I'm working. And then um, when you're not using it, you're actually supposed to attach it to the back. So you just go like that, you go like that, and you're done. So now it is completely attached to the back of the tablet so you can carry it around. You know, You don't have to worry about carrying them separately. It's just right there. And then when you want to use it again, you just kind of pull it open. And you set this back up like this. And you're done. So, I don't know. I think it's, it's a good stand. But that's just me. And some people are saying that this stand feels really flimsy and poorly made. But it's actually supposed to be lightweight because you know when you attach it to the back like this and you're, you're carrying your tablet around you don't want this thing to be really heavy and bulky because that kind of defeats the purpose of this being a portable workstation so I mean I'm glad that it's light you know I wouldn't want a really heavy um, stand that I have to attach to the back of it so um, yeah it's light for a reason and here's the case that I was talking about before where you have this little slot where you can put your stylus case in here and then you have this extra little pouch in here this is where I usually keep the cleaning cloth and then the stylus goes in here and it has these little straps to kind of keep it in place and then under here you have this extra little slot where you can store your stylus so if you don't want to keep it in the pen case and you want it um, to be more accessible you can kind of store it there and then you just put your tablet in here and put these little corners on it. And you zip it up, the magnetic flap over it, and you know, you're completely contained and ready to go. Now, one of the things I love about the companion is how fast it boots up. So right now it is completely shut down. It's not in standby mode or it's not asleep or anything. It's totally shut down. And so it usually boots in about five seconds. So I'm gonna start this. So right now, it, I just turned it on. And it goes to the Wacom screen and then to Windows. So done. You know, it doesn't even go to the old Windows loading screen or anything. It's just basically immediately booted which is awesome and of course the the companion is a full windows computer you know, it's not a pared down version or it's not like an ipad or an android or anything this has full windows so any windows program you have you can put it on here and this has windows 8 and i've never used windows 8 before there are some things i really hate about it but i'm starting to get used to it and i'm starting to like it a lot more and one of the first things i noticed is that there's this black border around the screen and then another black border so I was kind of wondering why they needed two different black borders but it's because this first one is actually used to perform different functions in Windows so if you swipe like this you get this little menu with all your things and this is like where the start button is so let's see you have Photoshop open and maybe something else open like your PC settings so then you can swipe this way to kind of flip between the different windows and then if you go like that you get um, there are different programs that you have open right here so I mean there's a lot of different um, things I think you can drag these and kind of have both of them showing at the same time there's actually no manual or anything about Windows 8 that came with this and since I've never used it before I didn't really know about all these different swipes so um, one of my friends kind of showed me some of the different things that you can do 
So I'm sure there's a lot more that I, I don't really know about, but yeah, that's a quick little tour of that. All right, so I'm working in Photoshop CC right now, and I actually have the camera kind of set up like right here. So I'm trying to reach around the camera, so it's kind of awkward to paint, but hopefully you can kind of see what's going on here. So I have my um, on-screen menus over here that uh, they're bound to this little rocker wheel over here. So left and right will turn these two on, and then up and down I have it set to brush size. Since in CC, since you can make the brush size all the way to 5,000 pixels, you know sometimes making brushes small can be kind of hard because it kind of jumps, or you know just even making them larger too. Like you'll try to set one to like 200 and it'll jump to like 400. So sometimes that can be a little tricky. So that's why I have that set to the rocker, and then. This one right here is a uh, spacebar, so I can move around. So, like if I zoom in here, and then I just hold this down over here to kind of move my canvas around. And then the one below it is shift, so that when I free transform something, I can just hold that down. And the other things I have on here I have save, copy, merge, paste, zoom in, zoom out, undo, redo, the color picker, which is this right here, and then flip. Free transform, distort, and warp. Now, some of these things like color picker, um, I have it set here because you know there's that cursor drift when you get close to the edge. So sometimes clicking this over here is a little tricky. So it's easier just to click it with my finger. And the same with the zoom in and zoom out. I used to just use this over here on the navigator window, but you know it'll do that thing like this where you'll accidentally hit this instead of the little mountain icon and so you'll either zoom way out or zoom way in but also again because of the cursor drift so I just have it set over here to zoom in and zoom out and also pulled these um, palettes over more to try and uh, get away from that cursor drift a little bit but uh, right now it's pretty good for that and I'm actually in balanced mode right now. Before it was really laggy in balanced mode, but for some reason it started working again in balanced mode and I didn't change anything. So you can see here, um, doing some quick little uh, lines, you can see kind of how responsive it is. So it's pretty good. Let me go back. So drawing some little swirlies and you know, just whatever and this image is 300 dpi 4000 by 5167 and it's 450 megs so pretty good and I've worked with files that are almost 2 gigs and it's there's still um, there's no lag it's still pretty much like this of course maybe if you do like a really big brush like even that is actually really responsive this is actually pretty perfect um, maybe even larger we'll zoom out and try it Whoa. and that's why I try and zoom in on this All right. yeah okay so that's a little bit laggier but my brush size is almost 1500 pixels and it's a dual brush so obviously it's gonna be a little laggy but other than that you know, I'm really happy with the responsiveness. Um, you know, when I first started using this, when I would do this, I would go like this, and I'd be finished, and it would go doot, 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 and it would still keep going like three or four seconds after I lifted my stylus away from the screen. But now, for some reason, it works just fine, which is awesome. Although I have no idea why it suddenly works, but I'm not going to question it very much. This was just a little doodle I did. It was probably like maybe 30 minutes. I was trying to test out um, this companion because I noticed that for some reason in balanced mode it was working fine again. So this was the first one I did in balanced mode where there wasn't any lag. So yeah, this is a pretty awesome computer. It's by far the best tablet I've ever used. And I've used the 
Fujitsu ST5112, the Asus EP121, the Windows Surface Pro, and hands down, this is way better than all those other ones. Let's see what else. Um, this upper button, I forgot to talk about that. That turns touch on and off in case you don't want to, you know, do anything with touch. But as soon as the cursor is within range, you know, you can't do anything, your hand won't mess stuff up. So you don't really have to worry about that too much. Like I said before in my written review, the only time that really have that happen is when I lift my cursor up to try and switch to the eraser. Sometimes my hand will touch it while this is away from it. But I mean, that doesn't happen, or happen that often. And uh, let's see what else. This top button, you know, it just shows you what everything's mapped to. I should actually probably switch this to something more useful because I know what these are mapped to because I set them. So I'm not sure why I would need to use that. And then uh, the middle of the rocker, it goes to the, the start menu. Now one thing I did notice about the touch versus the stylus, so you know how since when the stylus is within range, the touch is deactivated. So sometimes when I'm painting, like I'll be working and then I want to zoom in and out, but you know my cursor is still within range even though I've kind of brought it up a little bit, so these buttons don't work. So you kind of have to bring your hand back a little bit more for that to actually work. I mean, sometimes that can be a little frustrating because you, know, you want to try and do stuff and then you're like, oh crap, you gotta move your hand back again. I mean, it's not that big of a deal to move your hand back more, but um, yeah. And these little on screen menus, you can pick them up and drag them and move them around to wherever you want them, but I usually try and keep them over here, kind of out of the way. And the reason I have this one kind of up a little more is because if I have, you know, some of these windows open here, let's open two of them. So if they're minimized and you click this, you can still have room to kind of click them to switch to them. Because otherwise, if this is down, you can't really do that. And, um, you know, opening menus like this is kind of hard to read what's under here because you know these little on-screen menus stay on top of them that's why I was saying that um, the paint dock app is a lot better because when you moused over it it would disappear so that you know you could navigate through these windows without having to you know have this stuff in front of it but I mean it's not too bad I'm pretty much know you know where things are here that's also why I bound some of these things like save and um, uh, the free transform, distort, and warp, because those are all here under edit and file. So those are pretty much the only things I really use in there. So I don't have to, you know, go here too much, so I don't have to worry about this stuff being overlaid on top of it. I mean, when you go to image, it's still a little bit obscured, but it's not too bad. I guess I'll show you the the stylus a little bit. So it's pretty similar to the other ones. Um, let's see. This is the Intuos 4 stylus right here. You can kind of compare them. They're actually the same size. I mean, they're almost identical. And the the companion one has like the little metal ring around the trigger buttons. And then, you know, the top is a little bit different here, but they're pretty much the same. Now, it does recognize the Intuos 4 stylus, but it acts really weird so I wouldn't suggest trying to use this. Um, I don't know if it's supposed to use it or not, or be compatible with it, but um, you know, trying to, to move stuff, you see how it's it's not really reacting, like no paint's coming out or anything, and then all of a sudden weird dots will appear. So yeah, I wouldn't use the Intuos 4 pen or stylus, I would just stick with the, the one that it came with. Alright, maybe I'll do a little bit of some sketching on this guy so you can kind of see it in action instead of me just talking about it and pointing at it. <laughs> um, I was just in Seattle doing 
uh, concept push at Wizards of the Coast. And when this came in the mail, I ended up using it the entire time I was there. And I've actually been using a tablet PC for 100% of my professional work in the past, or for the past four years or so. So I always find it funny when people do reviews of tablet PCs and they always say something like, oh, I wouldn't use it for professional work, I would just use it for sketching, you know. It's um, kind of silly because, you know, you can definitely use these for professional work. I mean, I've been doing all of my professional work on these things, so they're definitely not just for sketching. And it's actually helped my carpal tunnel a lot. I've kind of mentioned that before whenever people ask me about this. As a lot of times, instead of working at a table, I'll sit on the couch and have it in my lap and work that way. So it helps my carpal tunnel a lot, which is awesome. Yeah, I don't really know what I'm doing on this guy. I'm just trying to make it look cool, but I didn't really have anything in mind when I started this sketch. some weird sci-fi dude I definitely like having the, the multi-touch again that, that was one thing I really missed when I had to go back to my Fujitsu because my Asus died well my Asus didn't really die the repair company broke it <laughs> but yeah it definitely makes you a lot faster being able to you know use these on-screen keys and then also these express keys over here on the side I think they're a great addition I know some people that say they don't even use them but I think it really speeds things up when you have those there so I would definitely consider using them I mean, I probably won't spend too much time on this thing. Just, you know, a couple minutes so you guys can kind of see me painting. It's always hard to, like, trying to do quick little demos because I change my mind a lot and I usually come up with designs as I'm painting. So it's really hard to do a quick painting and have it look cool because I always end up changing things and moving things around and I'm not one of those guys that can just immediately you know come up with a cool design I have to sit there and kind of figure it out you know, some people can just immediately come up with a good idea but not me which is kind of funny because I'm a concept artist. <laughs> it's not everyone's fast. I mean, I can usually paint fast if I know what I'm going to paint, but if I don't know ahead of time, or I don't have an idea, or if I'm not working from a brief or something, then it can take me a little while to kind of figure things out. It's a little distorted because the camera is kind of off to the side. I think I'll show some of the little express keys. Okay, so that right there, I've noticed sometimes my hand does um, move it around. I'm guessing because my stylus came out of range, but that's not that big of a deal. So let's say I want to change his head. You know, I'll just select it. Then copy, merge, paste, free transform, hold shift. So I mean, you know, doing stuff like that now is super fast. Because before I would have to go up to edit, do copy, merge, then go to paste, and then go to free transform here. And, you know, that was always kind of a pain. So having these things, you know, makes everything so much faster.
I keep using this navigator to zoom in because that's how I've been doing it on the Fujitsu because it doesn't have multi-touch. So I'm just so used to doing it now. I need to get in the habit of using these express keys. So it usually takes a little time to kind of get used to a new process. Okay, what is that? Something on the wrong layer. Yeah, so I think that's about it for this little demo. I mean, you kind of get the idea. Hopefully you can kind of see and tell that, um, you know, this thing is very responsive, very powerful. It is an awesome machine. I am so glad they finally came out with the tablet PC and that I waited for it to come out. So, yeah, that's the Wacom Companion in all of its awesomeness. And I'll see you guys next time. Later. Alright, so this is the Wacom Companion, and if you've read my written view, review, I've...